Radio Australia. Transmitting from the Melbourne Studios of the Australian Broadcasting Commission. Radio Australia, the overseas service of the Australian Broadcasting Commission. We're transmitting the North America and Central Pacific service on 17.84 megacycles per second, 16.82 meters, 15.32 megacycles, 19.58 meters, and 21.74 megacycles, 13.80 meters. The time in Eastern Australia is 11.01 hours. On the morning of Friday, the 11th of July, 1969, and this is Vic Kennedy, pleased to be with you once more, at least for the next hour. Into uh, tonight's transmission, giving the times of the American Eastern Standard Time, we'll have, first of all, some light music with her about the Brass, and then at ten minutes past nine, after any minutes, the these times are American Eastern Standard Time. At half past nine, the news. At 9.45, Dateline. At 10 o'clock, we have half an hour of Sound 60, tracks from the best-selling albums. At uh, half past 10, the second of our news bulletins for the transmission, and then 20 minutes to 11, the Dennis Gibbons show. For both, and the two on a bus.
Our day will come. Oh, get a set. Get on your marks for the Mexican Mulberry. with three astronauts aboard, is due to lift off from the United States Space Center next Wednesday morning. The countdown will last 93 hours, with more than 40 hours of built-in hold time to take care of emergencies or possible problems in the launching equipment. Starting at the countdown, got away on time after technicians fixed a leak in the pressurization system of the Saturn rocket, which will boost the Apollo 11 into space. The Apollo 11 program provides for two of the astronauts to make a landing on the moon's surface by use of a lunar landing module. The Singapore Foreign Minister, Mr. Rajaratnam, has said that the withdrawal of American troops from Vietnam is a sign that the United States is no longer prepared to rescue Southeast Asia from the communist threat. He said that if Southeast Asian nations were incapable of meeting the threat themselves, the Western players were resigned to making the best mar bargain they could with communist powers in the region. He too has proposed the setting up of an electoral commission to arrange free elections in South Vietnam. American officials have acknowledged that the United States is maintaining secret defense arrangements with Thailand. The Soviet Union has again criticized Kuhn's China but at the same time has offered to hold talks on international issues with both China and the United States. In the Middle East, the Egyptian forces claim to have wiped out an Israeli outpost, killing or wounding 40 Israeli soldiers. And a 93-hour countdown has begun for the launching of the American Apollo 11 bid to land a man on the moon. That's the end of the world news. Thank you, Brian Bagel. Each day, Radio Australia broadcasts news on the frequency to which you're tuned at uh, 8.30 and 9.30 p.m. American Eastern Standard Time or at 9.30 and 10.30 p.m. American Eastern Daylight Time and that is also to say 5.30 and 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time.
Just after 12.40 hours Australian Eastern Time now. This is Radio Australia. The springtime it brings on the shearing And then you will see that in droves To the West Country stations all steering Are seeking the job of the coast this is Dennis Gibbon with a program of Australian folk songs. Songs about convicts, bush rangers, swagmen, cheers, droves, and gold mines. Stories of their hardships, their achievements, and their failures. And after the shearing is over, and the whole season's all at an end, it is then you will see the flash shearers making Johnny cakes round on the bend. Let's start this program with one of the most popular Australian songs. It's called Botany Bay, and strangely enough, it was born in England on a stage show. Botany Bay differs to the average convict song in that the whole tempo and feeling of the song is gay and light-hearted. You see, it's a satire. If you lived in England at the time and you didn't behave yourself, you'd be banished to Botany Bay. <laughs> Such a swell, singing to a lie, singing to a lie, a lie, singing to a lie, a lie, a lie, oh, bound for Botany Bay. Take leave in old England, we cares about. Take cause we miss both what we knows. But because all we like thing at gentry, hops along with a log on our toes. Singing to a lie, a lie, a Singing to a lie, a lie. Singing to a lie, a lie, a lie. All bound for Botany Bay. There's the captain, as is our commander. There's the boatswain and all the ship's crew. There's the first and the second class passengers. Knows what we poor convicts go through. Singing to a lie, a lie, a lie. Singing to a lie, a lie. Singing to a lie, a lie, a lie. All around the Botany Bay. Oh, high the flight of a turtle dove. I'd soar on my pinion and so high. Slap down to the arms of my Polly love. And there I would nestle and die. Singing to a lie, a lie. Singing to a lie, a lie. Singing to a lie, a lie, a lie. All bound for Botany Bay. Now all my young dukies and duchesses, take a warning from what I have to say. Mind all of your own that you duchesses will join us in Botany Bay. Singing to a lie, a lie, a lie. Singing to a lie. It's interesting to reflect on the fact that when the first fleet landed at Botany Bay in the year 1788, they found it totally unsuitable for habitation, and the settlement was eventually founded a few miles to the north. Today, Botany Bay is famous for two things, oil refineries, and one of the runways of Sydney's airport extends out into the water. I'm often asked where I get my songs. Well, I suppose I'm fortunate to belong to the Folklore Council of Australia, which is a body of people dedicated to the cause of preserving Australian folk music. There are many such clubs and societies in Australia, and if it wasn't for them, singers like myself would find it very hard to obtain the necessary material and background, because a lot of research goes into it. The oldest Australian folk song is, of course, only as old as the colony, and that's not even 200 years. The music that we recognise as traditionally Australian folk music has, in the main, its origin in England, Ireland, Scotland and America. As new settlers arrived, they were naturally homesick, very homesick. They sang of the songs of their homeland, and eventually they changed the words to tell stories about local events, to express emotions about their new life in a country that is totally different to any other in the world. Oh, 
good when he got a five-year stretch, as everybody knows. And now he's down in Maitland Jail, broad arrows on his clothes. He branded all Brown's clean skins, and he never left a tail. So I'll relate the family state since Dad got put in jail. So stir the wallaby stew and make soup of a kangaroo tail. I tell you, things are pretty crook since Dad got put in jail. Ah, sheep all died a month ago, not rot the flame of fluke. The cow was boozed on Christmas Day with my young brother Luke. I sold the buggy on my own, the place is up for sale. That won't be all that has been junked when Dad gets out of jail. So stir the wallaby stew and make soup of a kangaroo tail. I tell you, things are pretty good since Dad got put in jail. Our best got shook upon some bloke who's gone we don't know where. He used to act around the sheds, but he ain't acted square. And mother's got a sheer coal forever on a tail. The family will have grown a bit when Dad gets out of jail. So stir the wallaby stew and make soup of a kangaroo tail. I tell you, things are pretty good since Dad got put in jail. Now they let Dad out before his time to give us a surprise. He looked around at all of us and gently blessed our eyes. He shook hands with a sheer of cold and he said that things looked stale. Then he turned his back on all of us and then go back to jail. So stare the wallaby stew and make soup of a kangaroo tail. I tell you things are pretty crook since Dad got put in jail. So stare the wallaby stew and make soup of a kangaroo tail. I tell you things are pretty crook since Dad got put in jail. The main form of transport in the early days was by bullock wagon. Bullocks were suited to the conditions in Australia, and a bullock driver once told me that a bullock could haul a load when the going was very hard and conditions were intolerable where a horse would break under the strain. When we bear in mind the fact that there were no roads and the heavily laden bullock wagons would wend their way through scrub, across rivers, uphill, down dale, in all manner of weather conditions, we can imagine that the bullock drivers were an extremely tough race. Constant urging was necessary. Many bullock drivers claimed that unless they used the profanest possible language, the bullocks just didn't respond. Hey, who the long strawberry? Get along, snow! There's ten tons of timber. Oh, I ain't to go. Such finicky bullocks I never had before. Just pull the trace. Oh, crush your backs raw. Oh, pull your damn bullocks. Put weight on the chain, pull forward two paces, then do it again. Hair burst to your rump, your hide I will tear, by the burn and blast of the words of the air. Hum, strawberry, on. come blossom, come run, get move on your bludgers, and ship that ten ton. There's many a mile, before me will tire, a bullock he's swearing, sets water on fire. been born. Hey, keep your heads down and pull the yoke high. Keep the load moving if you don't want to die. I have a 50-foot whip and one thing that's worse is a travel and fire and the air is our curse. Come, strawberry young. Come, back, Come, run. Get hold in your bludgers and ship that tent. There's many a mile before we retire. A fool that is One of the Australian folk songs that was very popular with Australian servicemen during both world wars was a song called The Dying Stockman. The song was not popular in the form that you're about to hear, but there were numerous parodies. Today, to be in fashion, you'd say they were pornographic parodies, because the tune and words seem to lend themselves to this particular type of treatment. The folk historian John Manifold calls it a strange rat bag of a song, with echoes of far older songs in it. 
In broad outline, of course, it's a parody on tarpaulin jacket or old stable jacket, which was sung to one of the many versions of the fiddle tune rather than the bow. The stockmen of Australia still use horses for rounding up sheep and cattle, although motorbikes are proving to be more practical in many instances. On the large properties, aeroplanes are used to check stock and to organise and coordinate roundups. One of our most famous poets, Banjo Patterson, wrote a poem about a stockman called The Man from Snowy River. I'll feature it in the next program because we Australians love this poem. I've seen stockmen riding at full gallop down steep hills, racing to turn cattle before they reach the bottom of the slope. One slip would put horse and rider beneath a hundred hoofs. Of course, they can't afford to think of things like that, and they don't. Perhaps the stockman as we know him will be replaced by something less glamorous in the not too distant future. But the songs and poems will remain. A strapping young stockman lay dying, his saddle supporting his head. His mates all around him were crying as he rose on his elbow and said, Wrap me up with my stock up and blanket and bury me deep down below where the dingoes and crows won't molest me in the shade where the coolie bars grow. Welcome to Mailbag once again. And what a week it has been. Goodness me. Like millions of others, I watched man take that first step onto the moon's surface. And that was just before one o'clock. Last Monday afternoon, Australian time. Probably at a more convenient hour for you people who were wanting to watch in North America because it was uh, early in your evening, wasn't it? Uh, with people everywhere, of course, in Australia and throughout the world, I sincerely want to take my hat. Take my hat off to those three intrepid astronauts, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin and Michael Collins, and, of course, the thousands behind the scenes who helped make it all technically possible. But I was most impressed with Neil Armstrong's words as he commenced that lunar walk, describing that first step onto the surface as one small step for man, but a big leap for mankind. And surely it must have been, too, as he stepped off that gold-plated ladder. A small step for man, but a very big leap for mankind. I don't suppose ever in the world's history have so many people been able to watch history in the making. A wonderful, wonderful time indeed. But I must leap to the mailbag now. California is represented well this week. Three letters from there. Uh, then there are letters from five other states of the United States and also from two Canadian provinces. But first, let's greet one of those Californians, Mr. P. Nielsen. P. Nielsen of 38262 Hamlin Street. That's H-A-M-L-I-N Street. In California, zip code is 94536 in the USA. Welcome to Mailbag, Paul Nelson. And thank you also for the color print that you sent to us. It's an excellent photo of part of your den uh, showing your collection of QSL cards. Uh, and I can just see part of an interesting looking car boat model on the shelf above. Is that another one of your interests, Paul? And thank you, Paul, for that print indeed. It's a very good one. There's a copy. Paul, well, by the way, there's a copy of our new program guide on its way to you, and uh, I'm glad to know that you enjoy our publications. Do keep tuned. Uh, today, Paul, you may find that you live close to one of our other Californian listeners, and that was Paul Nielsen. N-I-E-L-S-E-N. Paul Nielsen on 38262 Hamlin Street, Fremont, F-R-E-M-O-M-T, in California, where the zip code is 94536. But now we're paying our first visit uh, this week to Canada, and our greetings to Mr. D.M. Elliott on 892 Algoma Avenue, Moose Jaw. Oh, I love that name, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan in Canada. And your neat, verifiable report has been QSL'd, Mr. Elliott. Our signal rated five fours on the SINFO code uh, when you sent this in on the 14th of July. Mr. Elliott says that he's been a long time listener to our transmissions, and he enjoys them very much. He worked shifts in an oil refinery, and he'd like to know something about the oil industry in this country. Well, it's an ever-changing, exciting story, Mr. Elliot. I recently paid a visit to the city of Sale, spelled S-A-L-E. It's a little over 100 miles east of Melbourne, 
and that's the headquarters for a rapidly developing new industry covering natural gas and oil products. The controlling body is a joint venture, the SO Oil Company, well known in America, in association with the great Australian steelmakers BHP, Bradford Hill Proprietary. And their exploration work and actual rigs are all offshore in Bass Strait, just south of our Gippsland area. And of course uh, their headquarters concern is uh, uh, just south of the city of Sale. Bill Lemak, L-E-M-A-K, 5355 Sage Avenue, Edwards in California, 93523. A big hello to you, Bill, and thank you for these reception reports, numbers 4 and 5. They've been registered with our business club, and normal acknowledgements are on their way to you, the QSLs. Your one request to me is a request for information on the major exports of Australia. Well, Bill, our major exports are still in the primary field, wool, wheat, uh, wheat growers are worried at present by a possible bumper harvest this year in excess of our quotas. And then there's flour and butter. We exported 229 million pounds of butter in the last full year. Uh, then there are meats and fruits, sugar, hides and skins. They're also exported in large quantities. But in recent years, silver, lead uh, and other ores and concentrates have gradually found a higher place in our list of exports. The booklet facts and figures already posted to you will fill out this information for you. So good listening to you, Bill, and do join us again at Mailbag sometime, will you? Bill Lemak, L-E-M-A-K, whose address is 5355 Sage Avenue in the town of Edwards, E-D-W-A-R-D-S, California, 93523. Bill Mantis, saying goodbye to all of you until the same time next week. Cheerio, everyone. Thank you, Keith. Cheerio. Look forward to your company this time next week. This is Radio Australia Melbourne with a reminder that we have news for you at half past nine in just five minutes from now. To the Australian Broadcasting Commission, and we now close this program, which is transmitted for listeners in Canada, the United States of America, and the Central Pacific, from 9 to 11 p.m. American Eastern Daylight Time. That's 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time on 17.775 megacycles, 16.88 meter, meters, 15.17 megacycles, 19.78 meters, and 21.74 megacycles, 13.80 meters. Now well, from Melbourne, Australia, this is Edward Barnes, thanking you for listening and wishing you all a very good night.